One of the oldest universities in Russia has again opened doors for international in release. The admission campaign for overseas nationals opened at Kazan Federal Universities. Which specializations are available to new recruits and why Kazan is the best place to live and study for people of various ethnicities and religions? These and other matters are discussed in our program. Hello, this is Kazan University. We are glad to welcome you in Kazan, the capital city of Tatarstan. Today in our news. People in the university are very friendly and if I want to talk about the city, the structure is very good. Welcome! What are the regulations for international enrollment at Kazan University? We have uh, something like 70 uh, joint degree programs uh, with other universities from abroad. No borders for education. How does Kazan University cooperate with international partners? Kazan Federal University, I think uh, it's one of the top rated universities in Russia. All things living are in their hands. Why do people choose the Institute of Fundamental Medicine and Biology to become doctors and biologists? The admission campaign for overseas nationals has started at Kazan Federal University. This year, the number of vacancies for international students has increased. Places in bachelor, specialist and master programs are available. Kazan University is one of the oldest universities in Russia. It has the status of a federal university. Kafu is currently second in Russia by number of international students. Over 10,000 people from 101 countries are studying here. Which facilities are the most popular among international students? How to submit your enrollment papers and what's the new this year? We'll talk about all this now. Moving to another country, even if look awaited, is always a stress. New people, new city, new infrastructure and new language. That's why Kazan University has offices tasked with helping overseas students to adapt to the new place. The first department that an arriving student meets in an international office. Here, new students can fill in the necessary paperwork, receive answers to their questions and support during enrollment. You can enter the university through distance means because the internal exams are held online. In order to apply for the degree programs and for the preparatory school programs as well, students have to create a small personal account on our official website. It is called Budu Studentum KFU and for preparatory school there is another website and they can, can find the link on the website of preparatory school. So uh, when we talk about uh, the degree programs, uh, they need to create their personal account, they need to fill in the application form and also they need to apply for the program they're interested in. Nicholas came to Russia four years ago from Colombia to study economics. He is always smiling and can quickly switch between English, Spanish and Russian languages. When he was preparing for admission, he searched the Internet for information about universities which help overseas students adapt, where people from different countries can study, live and become professionals together. He spent his first year in the preparatory school. So I guess adaptability was not so hard, of course, it, it has to be hard because it's another language. You start from zero, so uh, you don't know the alphabet, you don't know how to say hi, bye-bye, so basic things you don't know. So at the beginning, of course, it's going to be hard, but it requires hard work and, well, after all, I can, I can say that it has helped a lot. The adaptability, as I mentioned, it was hard at the beginning, but then you start meeting people, uh, and these people get to get you to other people and from time on time you just realize that you are adapted and you are one more Russian. <laughs> the preparatory school welcomes one and a half thousand people each year. The format has changed in the last three years. Nowadays many students learn the Russian and basics of their future profession online. There are different programs from students both in lab and the content. Depending on your level of Russian language, you can choose a course of one, two or three semesters. The first two months and dedicated to intense studies of Russian language. After that, specialty subjects are added in five different subject areas. Humanities, Medicine and Biology, Engineering and Technology, economics or natural sciences. The preparatory school uh, helps students to uh, prepare for entrance examinations so they can successfully uh, 
take them and pass them. So uh, it becomes, our preparatory school becomes very popular because uh, we have uh, students from uh, Turkey, Iran, uh, Egypt and other, other countries. Amir arrived for Iran and is currently enrolled in the preparatory school. He wants to be a dentist. Dentistry is a mix of medicine and art, so I think the mix of those things are kind of interesting and fulfilling. So yes, I can help people and I can like work with my hands, you know, it's, it's rewarding. Amir started learning Russian before coming to our country. He looked for a suitable institution and chose Kazan Federal University. I find here very warming because people in the university are very friendly and if I want to talk about the city, the structure is very good. It's well organized, everything is calm and everything is built in order and I think it's really fun, yes. I'm enjoying my time here. This year, preparatory school is going to offer a new program in English language for those who plan to continue studies in English. You can submit your admission papers right now. The admission season started on 1st of March and the first deadline for submission is on 28th of July. However, after that, the deadline is usually prolonged for international students and I assume that the well plan to the final enrollment for this category of students in late September or early October. Kazan Federal University offers all the necessary conditions for studies and accommodation. From dormitories to study rooms in our buildings, everywhere you can make your homework and socialize with young people from various countries who have made our university an important and interesting part of their lives. Valery Saidov, Sofia Orlova, Hafiz Garayev, Kazan University. Kazan Federal University is chosen by nationals of various countries and continents. But the university doesn't just stop at that. New highly sought specializations are being opened and branch offices in other countries are being established. How Kazan University is preparing to admit new students? What are its international partners and why there are no borders for education? We have all spoken about all this with our guest, Vice Rector of for External Affairs, Timirhan Alyshev. Our guest for today is the Vice Rector for External Affairs of Kazan Federal University, Timirhan Alyshev. Timirhan Bulatovic, good day. Good day, nice to be with you today. I would like to talk about a partnership of Kazan Federal Universities and overseas universities and how international students can enter KFU. So we have prepared some questions and uh, as I know, uh, there are more than 10,000 and half uh, international students from 101 countries study at KFU uh, right now. So uh, what are the most uh, countries they come from? Uh, and maybe there are some uh, future partnership you're going to uh, make with other universities in, in the world? Uh, first of all, thank you for the questions. Uh, the uh, issue of internationalization of universities is very um, pressing right now because there are a lot of discussions going on here in Russian Federation about the future of international cooperation of Russian universities. <clears throat> of course, Kazan Federal University is one of the most uh, internationalized uh, universities here in Russian Federation. As you already mentioned, we have a lot of partners uh, from abroad. At the moment, we have uh, something, uh, something like approximately 350 different agreements uh, with our partners from more than 70 uh, countries all over the world. Um, uh, of course, uh, we have different kind of agreements. Some of them are just MOUs, Memorandum of Understandings, and some agreements are working ones, uh, which are connected to academic exchange, to joint degree programs. Um, at the moment, we have uh, something like 70 uh, joint degree programs uh, with other universities from abroad. So that's quite an impressive uh, number, actually. Uh, and if we're talking about the students, of course, a lot of international students are selecting, uh, uh, taking the open 
option of studying here on Kazan Federal University. Uh, those uh, are students from CIS countries, uh, former Soviet Union countries, and from um, other countries as well, actually, because uh, students are coming from one, uh, more than 100 com countries to this university. And at the moment, uh, the most well-represented countries, let me put it this way, those are uh, like Uzbekistan, um, China, uh, Turkey, Iran, uh, uh, Kazakhstan. Uh, so those are countries uh, which select our university, our programs, bachelor degree, master degree programs uh, to continue their uh, education. And uh, we also have some students coming from uh, quite uh, uh, like exotic countries for us, like Latin America countries. We have students coming from Ecuador, uh, from Colombia, uh, and we are also hosting them here, and uh, they uh, at the great security here. They are very comfortable here. So uh, we have a lot of partners, and uh, indeed, uh, students are selecting this university to to, to continue their education. As I know, Kazanfield University has uh, several uh, university branches in Republic of Tatarstan. Talking about the uh, the world and other other countries, so. Is there some plans to open representative offices in other countries? Uh, yes, indeed. At the moment we have two branches here in the Republic of Tatarstan. Those are in Ilabuga city, which is more connected to teacher education, and in Nabirnshulni city, uh, which is the place where uh, Kamas manufacturing plants are located, and we prepare engineering uh, professionals for these plants. Uh, but at, as I already mentioned, uh, we have quite a good uh, uh, cooperation and uh, we are well known, for example, in such countries as Uzbekistan, uh, which is a very close partner of the Republic of Tatarstan and of Russian Federation in generally. Uh, so uh, um, last year uh, we uh, signed an agreement with the government of the uh, Republic of Uzbekistan, uh, which is uh, related to opening the branch of our university, and it will be opened this year in uh, 2022, in September, we hope, uh, in G the city of Jizak. This is um, uh, the city which is located at, in the distance maybe of two hours ride by car from Tashkent. And uh, this uh, branch uh, uh, will be specialized in the uh, directions of um, uh, geology, of petroleum engineering, uh, in engineering generally, because uh, the Jizak is a very uh, well-developed region, and a lot of uh, uh, car manufacturing plants are located there as well. And also some uh, more like socio-humanitarian uh, uh, programs will, will be open there as well, related to economics, linguistics, uh, psychology, and uh, so on. This is the first project which we are developing at the moment, and the next project, which is also uh, connected to the opening of the branches, uh, in 2023 we are uh, planning to open a branch of our university in Egypt, in Cairo, in the capital of the, of the country. At the moment we have about 200 students starting here from Egypt, uh, and uh, uh, the medical education is uh, in huge demand, uh, actually, uh, from those students. And uh, we um, uh, signed an agreement, uh, a partnership agreement with one of the companies, uh, well-known companies, uh, educational ones in uh, Egypt. Uh, and we're planning to open a campus there in 2023, so it will be next year. And uh, the main specialization of this branch will be the medical education, as I already mentioned. It will be the general medicine, dentistry, uh, nursery, pharmacy, so these uh, medical specializations. So I see the plans is opening to branch in this year in, uh, in the Republic of Uzbekistan and the next year in Egypt. So uh, talking about the current situation, all we know what is happening right now, how that can affect on international students and should their parents be worried about them? Uh, of course, at the very first moments, uh, some of our international students were worried about this situation and their parents were worried and I personally uh, have some emails from parents and I answered them and we have Zoom calls with some parents and I described them this, uh, the current situation is quite stable here. Um, it's, uh, the students are absolutely safe. There is no problems, there are no pr any problem there. Uh, so uh, they're um, good. All the students are uh, uh, kept in a safety situation uh, in our dormitories here, in our campuses, there are no pro any problems. Uh, also, also there, are, there were some uh, worries and uh, 
they were concerned about the you know the flow of financial resources, how they can send the money to their um, children, and uh, afterwards they understood that there are good ways of sending money, no problem with the uh, financial transactions uh, for uh, their uh, ch uh, children. So at the moment uh, we don't have any. Uh, worries, uh, and we don't have any letters or messages, any information from the parents that they're worried that they want their students to come back and so on. So, of course, at the first time, uh, there were some um, concerns by some of the uh, students and some uh, parents, but at the moment, I can assure you that uh, there are no any uh, problematic situations uh, related to this uh, conflict in uh, Ukraine or some you know, aftermath of this. To continue our conversation about international students, I don't know, as for me, it's very difficult to prepare documents and enter university in another country. And uh, with your opinion, how easily they can uh, admit documents uh, to enter the university of Kazan Federal University and maybe find more information about our university. Okay, so you know, uh, of one of the uh, one of the you know uh, aims, uh, one of the targets of this very uh, you know our project of uh, making these um, uh, TV programs are uh, uh, connected to uh, you know making our university more transparent and. Uh, for uh, students and their parents to get more information about our university. And of course, my personal job and the job of my team is uh, um, aimed at uh, making the entrance and enrollment to our university uh, is uh, more simple uh, for, for those who want to be admitted to our university. And, um, uh, you know, there is a special website, special platform, on, uh, which is also translated into English language, um, uh, which is specially developed uh, for those applicants who want to be enrolled to our university and they can easily uh, register there It's on our website on the English version of our website when the you know the admission uh, link is located and they can enter and all the procedures are very uh, Transparent there, so it's quite easily for them to do this But at the same moment we have you know some partners in different countries uh, like they call it the recruitment agencies which also help uh, students to uh, uh, prepare all the documents to register on our websites and so on. But um, it's up to the parents to decide uh, which way to go. But my personal recommendation is just to enter uh, the website of our university, uh, to switch to English version and try to understand because it, quite easily they can uh, fill, all, uh, fill uh, in all the uh, uh, application uh, forms and all the, they can fill all the documents and all the exams are at the moment are carried out in the um, uh, you know, distant form so they don't need to to come to here to Kazan, to our university, to pass the exams, so they can uh, enroll to those exams and pass them absolutely easily in decent form. Of course, the, the exams themselves are not easy, but they have to prepare uh, either in English language or in Russian language, which program they will choose. But of course, again, uh, there are also uh, some resources like a Telegram channel. We do have the Telegram channel, a uh, special Telegram bot. Uh, chat, uh, we can put it this way. Uh, it's also, um, uh, the link to this chatbot is located in the English version of our university, site of, website of our university, and they can enter and get, get all the information about the institutes of our university and the programs which are uh, carried out here uh, in this uh, educational organization. Timurhan Bulatovic, I would like to thank you for our conversation. It was a great pleasure for me. Thank you very much indeed. And I, I wish you the successful cooperation with universities all around the world and more and more international students uh, that can enter uh, KFU in the future. So have a great time. Thank you very much. The university was established on the same day as medicine and biology in Kazan. In 1804, the university charter was signed. The Department of Anatomy and Natural History and the Department of Botany were among the first to be opened. The history of Kazan University inextricably linked with the names of some prominent life scientists. Physician Karl Fuchs, obstetrician Viktor Kruzdiv, anatomist Peter Lesgaft, psychiatrist and neurologist Vladimir Bekhterev, surgeon and pharmacist Alexander Vishnevsky, and many others. The Institute of Fundamental Medicine and Biology was established at Kazan Federal University 10 years ago. The Institute employees are among the best experts of medical science and healthcare community in Tatarstan. The Institute is tasked 
with giving high-quality fundamental medical and biological education. Safia Arlova has witnessed how future professionals are mentored here. Saving as many human lives as possible, not a dream but a goal for PhD student from Syria Shaima Hamza. After graduating as a biochemist in her native country, she realized that she needed even more expertise to find ways to cure cancer. She found a suitable choice in Kazan Federal University. Because everybody here was like helping me uh, in everything, even uh, when I wasn't uh, very good in uh, Russian language, everybody has, uh, everybody tried to explain me everything in my, in, like, in simple way. And yeah, it was very interesting. Apart from cancer, Shema is also working on COVID. New challenges call for new solutions. They are being solved at the Center for Precision and Regenerative Medicine of Kazan University. This center comprises over 20 laboratories in genetics, biochemistry, immunology, physiology and other disciplines. And most of these labs actually uh, they are multidisciplinary because uh, in current world uh, science requires that uh, new projects uh, uh, many different uh, specialists, uh, uh, scientists would participate uh, in multidisciplinary projects to achieve most interesting results. A lack of knowledge of Russian language is not a problem for students. The Institute of Fundamental Medicine and Biology has many employees who have internet at overseas universities and are fluent speakers of English, the international language of science. In Russia, um, there is a disease called hemorrhagic fever with renal syndrome. Yes, people come into contact with this disease through um, inhaling uh, fecal matters from um, rodents. So since I, I joined Kazan Federal University as a postgraduate student, I've been working on the viruses which causes this disease. During admission, the enrollees choose the study language they prefer, Russian or English. Apart from exams in chemistry and biology, they also take an exam in the chosen language. We have unique uh, structure for uh, studying medicine in our institute, in our high school of medicine, uh, which includes different departments. Uh, simulation center, uh, research labs where we train our students from the first year uh, till their graduation. The Institute of Fundamental Medicine and Biology includes 20 departments, 31 laboratories, a simulation center for surgery training and a zoological museum. The majority of medicine graduates successfully prove their qualification in their homeland and become general practitioners. Or they can choose to enroll in medical resistance and select a narrow specialization. Akshay is currently in her third year and wants to become a pediatrician. My sister is uh, studying in Kazan State Medical University. So I came to know about uh, this university from her. Then I checked for the rating of the university and it was showing good and it was having a nice faculty, everything, it was shown, so I got like interested and I gave the exam and passed in it and came here. Rahul has also made his choice of profession and the place of his medical resistance studies. After uh, completing my graduation here, I am planning to do surgery. I will do my internship in India and uh, after that I am planning to like move to Germany for my master's. Such a colorful picture is also very practical. The opportunity to highlight selected cells helps scientists determine the patterns of the infection spread in an organism. The Laboratory of Molecular Genetics of Microorganisms studies the influence of microbes and bacteria on an organism. Munir, a PhD student from Morocco, researches lactic acid bacteria, which are helpful both in treatment and in brewing fermented milk products. I am interested about uh, lactobacillus. So when I met my supervisor, uh, we discussed our team. So I am. Uh, I like uh, the topic, that's why I decided to work about lactobacillus and probiotic antimicrobial peptides. 
One of the lab's primary research areas is antimicrobial medications, studying whether they are better than something already available in pharmacies. Another area is the modeling of combined infections, a situation when several pathogens simultaneously case a disease. The interaction of microbes can have different effects on medications and the treatment process. The second part of our work is devoted to the development of probiotics, uh, microorganisms which are widely used not only for human but also in uh, veterinary and agriculture as uh, feed additives for uh, animals, for chicken and uh, others and uh, now we are starting this big project to develop new uh, additives for agriculture. Rand, a Syrian student, has been interested in genetics for a long time and that's why she chose one of the best universities in Russia. Kazan Federal University, I think uh, it's one of the top rated universities in Russia and uh, in addition I love uh, Kazan City, therefore I chose this university. Kazan Federal University is one of the few universities in Russia whose alumni are in high demand in other countries. This is one of the most important criteria for those who are interested in medical diplomas for their future career. You can find what you need at the Institute of Fundamental Medicine and Biology and become a practitioner, a researcher or a teacher. Postgraduate direction. Uh, in this case, for biologists it's uh, maybe much more easy because there are uh, not couple, more than a couple of directions because it's science, it's education, I mean uh, working as teacher. Uh, also you can join with industry, bio biochemistry industry, biotechnology industry and of course you can choose work uh, in some um, lab in uh, medicine. Kazan Federal University is one of only three Russian universities in the top 500 institutions in the life sciences subject area in the world. It's quality and uh, of education, science and environment. I mean scientific environment, living environment, comfortable, quiet environment in Kazan. And of course, uh, everything what you want you can find in Kazan Federal University. In School of Biology and then School of Medicine. The top-notch infrastructure of the Institute of Fundamental Medicine and Biology, the quality of education and the recognition of our diplomas in other countries. All this forges our students into real professionals and hundreds of our alumni who treat people and advanced science across the world are proof of that. Sofia Arlova, Hafiz Garayev, Kazan University. Kazan Federal University is going to conduct an international archaeological school. This is the first time when the event is divided into two stages. The first is said to take place in a historical site in Tatarstan and the second in Uzbekistan. The school participations will receive classes in archaeological zoology, Asian ceramics, paleontology, restoration of historical artifacts, biological archaeology and geological archaeology. The archaeological school is open to students and young scientists from various countries. The funding is provided by UNESCO grant. This and other events from the university life are covered in our next report. Kafu and Helvan University Cairo held their first joint research seminar. It was opened by acting rector Dmitry Tayursky. Kazan University currently hosts 200 nationals of the Arab Republic. Plans are in motion to open a university branch in Egypt. Russia, Korea. The present and the future of Korean studies in Russia. This was the topic of discussion at the Institute of International Relationship of Kazan University. A research conference was held here. One of the participants was Consul General of the Embassy of the Republic of Korea in Russia, Park Ho. He noted that Kazan Federal University is a driver of Korean studies in Russia. Uh, Following the results of this conference, reports are accepted on topics such as the history, culture and economy of Korea. During our work, about 450 works are selected. 
the International Day of Chinese Language was celebrated at the Consulate General of the People's Republic of China in Kazan. The event was joined by representatives of Kazan Federal University. Over two and a half thousand students study Chinese at Kafu. Our university cooperates with more than 25 research and educational institutions in China. There are exchange and scholarship programs for the students studying Chinese language. Kazan University and Khazar University, Azerbaijan, signed a memorandum of cooperation. The ceremony took place during acting rector Dmitry Tayushsky's visit to Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan. Several meetings were held with local universities and research organizations. Kafu representatives presented their lectures on the cultural heritage of the Republic of Tatarstan and the Turkic people of Eurasia. Student Spring Festival Gala was held at the UNIX Cultural and Sports Center. This large-scale arts event unites students from all the universities of Tatarstan. The competition is organized in several stages, and each of the institute and faculties presents their program. The best event selected by the jury. Over 2,000 students took the stage during the festival, and more than 7,000 were in spectator seats. In conclusion, the jury chose winners and the best performers in various categories. Today is really a big holiday. It is a holiday of creativity, youth, creative ideas and beauty, everything that our students showed us. It's a great find that foreign students of KFU took part in our program. This community is expanding year by year, despite the difficult times of the pandemic. This community has shown its solidarity and active participation in all creative teams, in all institutions of KFU. The most important thing is a person. A person who incites your curiosity, affects your curiosity. And machines cannot do that in the same way that people can. The elements of discovery are all around you. You don't need a computer, said Steve Jobs, an American entrepreneur, inventor and industrial designer. Kazan Federal University is a place where some of the best researchers and educationers in Russia work and teach. You can see that by yourself, if you are choose Kazan University for your studies. Well, that's all the news we have for today. Meet you in two weeks. Next time we will talk about what we offer for students of oil and gas industry and show you a bit of pieces from the daily lives of international students in Kazan. Be safe and have a great time!